Risen Moon, this stop, Risen Moon Station. My boy. Are you ever gonna tell me what's going on? This is starting to feel a little too much like a kidnapping. I haven't been fully informed on the details. My only orders were to retrieve you and to rendezvous here. Rendezvous? With who? Huh? Hey, sub big guy. <laughs> Lieutenant Breda! Episode 18, The Arrogant Palm of a Small Human. Damn, what a title. I have no idea what's going on. Good thing I can explain it all. Hmm? Huh? <laughs> uh, when did you get here? And how'd you even get in? The window. <sighs> it seemed appropriate for a criminal. First, uh... there's no need for you to worry about Ed's well-being. Huh? I'm sure he's just fine. <sighs> So Roy has gotten everyone out at this point, right? Except for Al, I guess, but what's his game? He's obviously gonna make a move, I just don't know what it is. But I'm wondering if the mission he sent Ed on is actually just clearing him out, or if there's actually a purpose to it. Whose idea was it to bring the kid? It was a direct order. So, this is Xerxes, huh? Xerxes, right. Ling mentioned that he wanted to see it with his own eyes, right? Looks just like the fable described it. Did you say a fable? Yeah, the Eastern Sage. It's a story about the origin of alchemy in Amestris. It claims the entire kingdom of Xerxes was destroyed in a single night, and that the only survivor wandered into Amestris shortly afterwards. He was the one who went on to spread the science of alchemy. Interesting. How interesting. We yeah. have a similar legend in Xing about a drifter from the west. It's said that his teachings were combined with our ancient techniques to form the Alka history we practice today. Hmm. Alka history is primarily used for medical needs, isn't it? Yes. I wanted to visit the ruins of Xerxes. That route goes by them. Sure you right. did, Link. Now I know why. But if Xerxes was such a highly advanced society, how were they wiped out in a single night? It could very well just be a legend. Or it could be alchemy. That looks familiar. What are you gawking at? Come on! Edward! Back east, where I was. It's a nice place. None of the big city noise. And lots of beautiful women. What the? No. <laughs> this isn't real, though. Wait, what? There really wasn't any place in Amestris we could safely hide a dead girl, especially one that's still alive, you know. So the colonel knew that Lucy yes was Edison all along. <laughs> Is this real? Can I believe in this? Oh my god, if this is real, I'm so relieved. I'm so relieved that Roy didn't do that. I'm so jaded, it's so hard to trust. Like, even seeing her, I'm like, nah, it's a, it's a desert mirage. <laughs> Whatever Roy's doing, he's doing a great job. Because I'm totally lost. <laughs> if he's trying to cover his tracks, he's doing it. He's doing it good. Damn, I kind of want to go back and watch the last episode again and see see his reactions to things, like Armstrong apologizing and the doctor. The guy's committed. He's committed to his vision. He just took that. It is real, right? <laughs> I'm here. Yo, Mustang, you seen today's paper? Because there's an interesting article on the- Hey, Bunny, you know better than to call me at work. Let me call you right back. Just hang on, okay? The lieutenant fired a bullet all right, but it was at me, not you. I've still got a hole in my right hand where it passed right through. Well, that changes things. Barry, I've got a proposition that you might like. Wow, didn't think I would like Barry when I first saw him, but Barry the Meat Man, what can I say? Thank you, Barry. <laughs> Gotcha. I promise not to kill anyone. How about Second Street? That's why I said that. Huh? I need you to gather everything on this list. On the double, okay? What is this? The ingredients for a well-cooked corpse. Human transmutation? Of course not. I'm just gonna whip up something that looks like a human corpse. It'll be too charged for them to ID it. That won't stop them from checking the dental records. I've got it under control. I've got plenty of experience burning corpses. Yikes. <laughs> You're Maria Ross, correct? It's a dummy. From this point on, you're dead. Wow. This makes me so happy, I can't even begin. <laughs> Uh, 
Hey there, full metal. What happened here, Colonel? Tell me! He really sold it. Aw, oh, man. We didn't plan on this one. Edward's here? Yeah, but I'm sure the Colonel will come up with something. He came up with a lecture about military service and a soldier's responsibility. So we all agreed to rendezvous here in one big effort to aid the lieutenant's escape. I see. It was also a really nice touch sending Armstrong and Ed, right? Like, Roy could have just kept that as a secret from them the whole time. But he did this to end their grieving, which is, like, surprisingly compassionate. Unless there's another motive, which there probably will be. Even so, it's nice. I'm very happy with Roy right now. <laughs> I can't believe the colonel was able to pull one over on us like this. Right? He knew it'd be easier to convince you if you actually saw Lieutenant Ross. <laughs> Fine, I'll admit it, alright? He actually knew what he was doing this time. He said he didn't want to take a chance on some hot-tempered kid endangering the operation. So he sent you out here. HOT-TEMPERED KID! Yeah, not hot-tempered at all. Is there a phase beyond liberating Lieutenant Ross? Indeed. He's got a plan to reel in the puppeteer. The one that's behind the conspiracy. NO ONE CALLS ME A- <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? You remember Barry from the fifth lab, right? He went on one hell of a rampage. They're bound to send someone to reclaim him. In this case, it's full metal Barry. alchemist. Nice. Wow, what a card. So Lieutenant Ross is innocent. But why take Ed? The Colonel was just trying to keep him out of his hair, wasn't he? You got it. I struck up a deal with Barry to help him out with the jailbreak in exchange for the secret to his immortality. But of course, the science guys that put me in this body are all dead, and it's not like I know how they did it. You should ask that Alphonse kid. So here I am. I was promised you'd tell me. I don't think that's how promises work. I don't exactly see how I have anything to do with it. I've got nothing to do with this. Zilch. And yet here I am, stuck in the middle of it, and framed by homunculi. We've collected a fair amount of intelligence. They know more than I thought they knew. The General's killer. I promise you this, Lieutenant. We will absolve you of this crime. Lieutenant Crump. I mean, General Hughes. It's just hard to accept that he's dead. And what shall you do now, Edward Elric? That's always the question, right? Al and I committed a taboo. We still have people that help us. So I have no choice. All I can do is move forward, and I'll protect everyone I can along the way. It's the only thing I can think of. So I have to do it. I have to. It's a beautiful scene. One thing I love about the cast of the show, especially the, the soldiers, they all have a tremendous love for Ed despite his flaws, because they can see right through him. And also they, they have sympathy for him being young and having had tragedy in his life. And I think Ed's speech reflects a natural and important arc of life. I think there's a period of time where selfishness is kind of important. Like when you're first emerging as a person, you're kind of in a sea of chaos, right? Trying to figure out who you are and what's important to you. But then I think there comes a point where you sort of turn a corner on that and you realize that there have been people at your side the whole time who have allowed that to happen, who have allowed you to have that space because they love you, and they don't take offense at your immaturity. It's a real gift if you have that. And I feel like this these people are so good to add in that way. Like, they all clearly adore him. He can be kind of rude, he can be harsh, but they see the potential and they create the space for him to explore that. And so it's beautiful to watch Ed sort of having a realization about that and kind of come back around and reconnect with the mini society that has given him the structure to explore that. That's something I feel very strongly about. You know, like, for a long time I was thinking about what I could do that would be the most fun or that would get me ahead. But as I get older, my goals sort of shift to include, like, how can I give back to people who supported me along the way? And they all get to witness this, which is nice. Please deliver a message to the Colonel. I need him to know how grateful I am for what he's done. If there's any way I can help him, tell him to send for me. I owe him a great debt and I am willing to put my life on the line to repay it. The cynical side in me wonders if that wasn't part of the plan as well. Oh. <laughs> well, how about I swing by the shop? I'm sorry, hold on, Roy. Hey, Kate, we have a customer. Could you please let Jacqueline know? Jacqueline? We have a customer. Copy that. Oh, it's he's sending code. Hold on! Barry! We want this one alive, so don't hit it! Smells like an ashtray. Gene Havoc? <laughs> yeah. 
Fallman? Don't you think I'm wearing this mask for a reason? Man, I can't stand working with amateurs. <laughs> ah, damn it! <laughs> Who is it? Told you it was safer. We've got the hawk's eyes watching over. Is it Hawkeye? I heard a loud noise. What happened? It was nothing. A customer was getting fresh with Jacqueline, so I slapped him around a little bit. Oh yeah? Nice. That's so clever. No way. That's my old human body! Those sick bastards must have dumped the soul of some feral lab animal into my body. And it came to find me because it wants its real soul back. I haven't even seen this guy since the day my soul got yanked out of him. He was pretty ripped. It's like that transmutation circle from the fifth lab. And why does the top part have to be missing? <laughs> You're an Ishvalid. That's enough of your shameful behavior. Look, he won't try to attack you again. Can you please just let him go now? <clears throat> You stood up for me. I don't get it. I always heard that you guys hated Amestrians. Right. I know that not all Amestrians are bad. Madam Sean and I were both injured during the Civil War. But then we were saved by these two Amestrian doctors. To be honest, I do hate you. But the two of them saved me. And you deserve the same treatment. Wow. You're not talking about the Rock Bells, are you? <clears throat> Oh. Are you saying you were right, a friend of Dr. Rockbell? Uh, yeah. They saved the lives of countless Ishvalans all throughout the course of the entire war. No kidding. They were like an aunt and uncle to me. They refused to abandon their post. It didn't matter how much the fighting escalated. Wow, that's awesome. Winry's a chip off the old block, huh? I like the idea that people at an individual level can make big differences that ripple out. Like, Winry's parents did a great thing, and these people will never forget that. And, you know, they may have even saved Ed's life. I think one situation where you can really clearly see this is when you travel. Because we have this way of categorizing each other, right? And so if you're a foreigner living in another country, that becomes your prominent label when people look at you. And so you become conscious of that, and then it kind of adds, like, a gravity to your actions. Whatever you do, what people see you do will either add to the negative images people have of you, or it could also be a positive thing. You know, it could change someone's mind. Or someone can, like, think of their American friend, right? And then anything that they hear that's bad about America, they remember, like, well, not all Americans are like that, or not all Americans think like that. Recently, one of the classes I was teaching in China graduated. I was planning on going to the graduation, but because of COVID, I can't. So I made them a little video message to be played at their graduation. And one of the things I said in that short video was to remember their relationships and remember that like, even though people will try to divide us for political reasons or whatever, there are good people from all over the world and that the connection that we shared because I was you know, somewhat close to those students is proof of that. And it works both ways, right? It's like, they know I care about them. And so hopefully that will make them you know, more open-minded and more tolerant when it comes to thinking about people from other countries, even when there's bad news about, you know, China-American relations. But it works for me too, right? Like, I will always remember those students, and so bad things I hear about China, it doesn't really matter to me because I think about the individuals that were special to me. And it's really important to, like, separate the messages you get about, like, a group of people as a whole with the special experiences you had. And so I think it's a very powerful thing to think about it that way, and to, like, treat every interaction as, like, a chance to put forth the good that you want in the world. If nothing else, it just makes things more difficult for people to be hateful. How did... How did they die? They were killed. They were both murdered in cold blood. And it was by the hand of an Ishvalan they'd saved. But that's so... I'm so sorry. There was nothing we could do to stop him. Why did he look like that? He was an Ishvalan monk and his right arm was tattooed. <gasps> was it Scar? Scar killed Windu's parents? That just connected a whole bunch of dots. If you should have the chance, would you deliver a message to the resting place of the Rock Bells for us? Give them our thanks and our apologies. <laughs> You know how amazing this is? This guy. I mean, how often does a guy get the chance to chop up his own body into tiny little pieces? Barry. Back off, Barry. This is just cruel! I have to do it! It's my body, so it's up to me! And I'm putting it on the chopping block! Damn it! I said no! What's wrong? Just a squabble. One of the customers is mouthing off. Oh no. I'm gonna have to call you right back. I've got a customer of my own to deal with. <laughs> Oh no, this guy. 
Hello. I hate gluttony. <laughs> What the heck? That episode just flew by. It's good timing because my cat's stepping all over my headphones. Oh, it's ending with me? What do you think? It's a new ending. That was nice. That's the first time I've watched the full thing. What do you think? You like it? You like it? Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, but you don't like me picking you up? Okay, sorry. So first of all, I'm so relieved that Ross is alive. Good guy Roy Mustang. He just keeps getting more interesting and complex by the minute. He sniffed out that plan. He kept a totally stoic demeanor about it. He has this whole like system of pretending he's talking to love interests on the phone, but passing code to Hawkeye, who I guess was putting on a show when she stormed out, right? I guess that was part of the plan. It's a relief because you want to like Roy Mustang, right? Like he's a really cool guy. But him killing Ross sort of put a really dark color on that. It went from this negative for Roy to this huge positive. Like I ended the last episode feeling kind of sad about him. And now I feel better about him than ever. Then you have the great scene with the Ishvalans. You have the connection with Winry and Scar. And also, even though it was just a very small thing, I feel like it's going to be really interesting, or I'm really interested in it, to find out what is what is with the sages. I might have misunderstood, but... It seems like there, there are two sages, or two stories about sages at least, that both come from Xerxes. I feel like there's a lot they could do with that, and I, I'm pretty sure that they will do something with that. And then you got my boy Barry, who's like, becoming a, a fun character, actually. I remember in the fifth laboratory episode, I kind of preferred Sean Connery. Sean Connery seemed like the nice guy. Barry seemed like a total jerk, but he's becoming kind of clutch. Like, he did a great thing. And, you know, for all this talk about killing, he's like the bad guy that isn't. You know what I mean? And yeah, and the world keeps getting bigger, right? Like, now Ed is traveling outside of the, the main kingdom. I forget what it's called. And Ross is going to Shing, although I'm not sure if we'll see her again. Wonderful episode, as, as usual. <laughs> yeah, but that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time for episode 19.